we bring a new perspective talk portrayal and perception reflect on many topics friendship love life lessons the goal is to get you thinking so tune in to the show we're immune to all the trolling leave the comments below Zach was talking about this yesterday, um, the invasiveness of Yes, Google. yes, yeah. it's insane, like, especially Facebook ads, I don't, like, I pay way too much attention to them, no joke, but I was looking at engagement rings, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, <laughs> yes, for that's me. what women do. <laughs> no, for real, like, <laughs> I told you this, I was like, I have no plans of getting married, <laughs> but I spent so much time looking at engagement rings. So I was looking at engagement rings and I was actually trying to learn about the history of engagement rings and why they became a thing, right? Why are they a thing? Well, so because it's a, it's like a down payment, basically, oh. of like, I am able to provide for you and this is a symbol of oh, my abilities. My abilities. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. so what, what, is the, what does taking it back mean, like in the divorce? What does that mean? That you don't love each other no more. Okay. <laughs> it's like, my money is not your money anymore. Okay. Yeah. But so I was looking this up, and then a couple of minutes later, I get on Facebook, and it's just like Jared's Jewelers, K Jewelers, and like a bunch of mm -hmm. local ring shops. And I was right. like, I know how but, you got but here. You can, but but yeah. it's it's not just Google, because I, I do marketing oh, now, right? Right. And, and, and so they, you can do that. I can <laughs> say that someone that looks at my page or someone that's researching this, yeah. I put in a keyword. And so if you look at that keyword and I'm advertising, right? And usually if I'm advertising with Google, mm -hmm. I'm also advertising with Facebook. Right. I'm also advertising with YouTube. And so those three things are like, I don't know, the trifecta of like- The holy trinity. Yeah, I was about to right. say, like, it's just like God, <laughs> God the Son, so and the, the Holy, holy Spirit. Spirit. Yeah, yeah, it's just- And it works. It works, I mean, for people who are generally, like, only consumers, but when, like, people are just, like, just love knowledge and just learning things like me, like, I Google everything. So it's like, you're going to sell me ads for everything because I'm going to look up things that I don't want. Right. You know, exactly. things that I have no interest in, like, purchasing. I just want to know why. I just want to know how they came about. Like, I Google all this and I get ads for it, too. Like, I'm like sometimes I'm like, okay, I'm like, makeup, where did this come from? Maybelline company, like who started, like who founded this? Right. They look it up, and then all of a sudden, like Maybelline ads popping up. Yeah, it's like you want this next camera. Like, well, you see, yeah. you see, the the world doesn't work for people like you anymore. It's not made for people like you. It's, you're not you're not who they're trying to target. Exactly. Honestly, um, they're trying to target everyone else. The complacency. And, and exactly, yeah. exactly. Because you're you're reading to read the, the knowledge, right? And most people are only going to look up things that they either want to buy. Or things that they have bought that just want like more information of. Like, hey, I just bought the Range Rover in 2012, but now that 2013 is out, let me. It's, look at it. yeah. it's yeah. interesting because it's it's reducing people from individuals to commodities. People yeah. are definitely commodities now. No one. It's if you don't. It's it's so obvious now because people don't have independent individual thought. So the fact that you can be reduced to your browsing history. You know, you could be reduced to and marketed to based on your browsing history. But but but, but you're, you're you're done. That's done to you. They're they're just reanimating the wheel because that's done to you based on your skin color already. It is yeah. That's a good point. But they they're, they're not doing anything new. They're just taking it to new levels. So they're now it's just like instead of them basing you based on your skin, that's that's silly mm -hmm. for them to do. You know what I mean? Because now you can be black and be smart. You can be white and be dumb. You can you you can be all you can be rich yeah. and be you know whatever. You know, and so that's not a logical way well, for me to. But I feel like this time they're right. You know, this time they actually yeah they have it right. I mean. I feel as though, for example, if someone, if we did have the ability, like, okay, no, we do have the ability. What do I mean if we did have the ability? <laughs> they have the ability to create artificial intelligence. If you could, you, in my opinion, you could take someone's browsing history and create a, an artificial intelligence robot clone of them. Oh, I would agree with you because so most of the time we spend our free time, our work time, our academic time, it's on a computer. It's on the internet. You don't. No one writes longhand anymore, right? You're not sitting there writing out your thesis. You're on the computer. You're constantly googling things. You can figure out what someone likes so quick. Especially like 
So I've done this to people that I'm like, mm, I kind of want to go on a date with you, but I don't know enough about, I just look them up, I'm like, I know everything about you now. Exactly. Right, so it's not very difficult. And I'm not, like, I know people that are really good at Facebook stalking. Mm-hmm. I'm not one of them. I can I could barely find him. <laughs> and I'd like known him for a while. <laughs> I was like, I don't even know how to spell his name. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a problem. <laughs> right. But um, it's so easy to do that. And that's why I would agree that it's you can make a clone so easily. It's like, like I don't see the because it's a double edged sword. No, you're not wrong. That's like yeah. the whole basis of capitalism. You're just not supposed to say it. <laughs> Right, don't acknowledge it. Yeah. Don't, don't I, give it light. I mean, even as a doctor, sick people, they're they're, they're money. Yeah. Like, I had this conversation with my uh, interviewee, mm-hmm. interviewer, not interviewee, at a and Her name's Dr. Diane Kraft. She's awesome. But we were talking about how one of the most secure jobs you can have is being a doctor because people are always going to be sick. And that's a weird mentality to have because most people when they go into medicine their motivation is to help people but there's always in the back of your mind like whether it's a pessimistic thought of there's always going to be sick people so that's why my help is needed or like well i know i won't ever lack for a job and as a doctor the funny thing about being a doctor not to you know trash the profession i mean go for it it's fine (laughs) you don't even have to have a solution like, you really don't. You, really you really don't, don't even have that. You just gotta try really yeah, hard. It's like it's like one of the one of the few I feel like careers where people can come in, and you, not really help them, they leave. You tell them to come back, and they still come. And they feel better. Yeah. Like not. So my mom has a lot of illnesses, and no one can figure out what they are. Right. We still go to the doctor like every three months for checkups, and it's like. Well, due to this time, it's like, no, my knowledge hasn't expanded <laughs> since the last time you came in. Right. But it's also just a sense of, well, someone's trying. See, I wish I could get paid for, like, not doing work. Like, people come in, they're like, they send me a file. Like, yeah, your file was really big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your file was so, really um, big. So, I decided that uh, <laughs> come back next time. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I, I'm actually, that, 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 that's funny because... I'm doing summer camps, and I, I've told a couple of parents that, that have called me. I'm like, hey, you know, I'll call you back in about two weeks because I'm still getting clients, and I want to be able to, you know, put the kids by age, um, by availability, right. um, in order and everything. And I mean, that's that, that's basically what the doctors are doing because, believe it or not, after they see you, if they don't know what it is, they write down the symptoms, and it's put into their, you know, Doctor database, right? Yeah, doctor, <laughs> doctor, it? yeah they're, they're, no, electronic I mean, health workers. I mean, yeah, electronic health workers. Yeah, doctor database. It just seemed more fancy to say that. No, but and then the, this information goes and is and, and and it will just sit there until you know someone else has the same. The thing is, it doesn't just sit there. So I work with Alzheimer's and dementia okay. patients, and no one really knows what the cause for either is, right? So. A lot of uh, people that I see will come in with the early early signs, but the thing is, when you have the early signs, it could be anything, mm-hmm. right? So you write down this. Hey. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, I have a tremor. Oh, I forgot where I put my keys. Is that age, or do you have a neurodegenerative disease, mm-hmm. right? So when you write down those symptoms and you input them into EMRs, what it does is it'll give you like possible things that it could be, right? And a doctor spent so much time researching mm-hmm. like when you go like as you said like you may go in and they might have no idea doesn't mean it left their mind they're gonna go home and they're gonna read on it and they're gonna try to find a solution which just mm-hmm. might not help you no <laughs> it, it <laughs> might not and that's, that's, you. that's yeah, true that's, that's very that's true it might not help you but they are working to expand their knowledge and it might help someone in the future and that's that's the, all what science is, right? Like yeah, you exactly. just you yeah, doing something, error. right? Especially like I work with women who are re- recently released from incarceration. Mm-hmm. So when we're interviewing them, we know that the information we're collecting is not going to help them yeah. because it's a long-term project, and they know that it's not going to help them. But there's a sense of camaraderie, and well, if I contribute this, maybe I can help someone That's else in the future, right? Exactly. That doesn't take away from the value of it. Great. It, even if it doesn't personally benefit you. And that's why I feel like the internet is probably one of the best things that could have happened to medicine. I mean, because you have 
you even, I mean, you have forums where people can, yeah. you know, discuss what happened and, you know, maybe someone in Idaho got a diagnosis, you know, for exactly the same symptoms that you got, you know, and you had your doctor who, you know, didn't quite have, you know, doesn't quite have the same experiences with this, you know, whole array of people, you know, you're going to see different people, so many different things, the human body so complex, right? So, you know, the fact that we are so far away yet so close with the internet, you know, it's great and it, it helps that. And that kind of leads me to, you know, to ask a question. If you guys had, if you had to rank, you know, WebMD amongst general practice doctors, WebMD was a general practice doctor, what percentile would WebMD fall in as, you know, as like, I guess in rank, what percentile would WebMD be? Are you, oh God. <laughs> are, are you suggesting that you think that WebMD is a greater, I guess, resource, resource than actually going to the doctor? No, I'm asking what percentile do you think web and, like, you know, as percentile far as, of what? like, as far as, let's say diagnoses, right? Let's okay. say correct diagnoses. Like, so let's say that, like, you know, we got random selection of 40 patients go into randomly selected doctors from every state mm -hmm. and they, you know, have whatever random conditions that they may or may not have. Mm -hmm. They go into these doctors to get diagnoses and they go to a WebMD as well. Let's look at accuracy rate, accuracy of their, you know, diagnosis. I feel like people are more honest on WebMD than they are with their doctors. Yes. That's just, but, 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 but that's just factual. Like your doctor asks you a question and you're like, no, I don't want to tell you that there's like blood in my pee, but you'll type it in to see like on, on, on the internet because the internet is confidential right. or we think it's confidential, yeah. right? Yeah. I, yeah. But see, I. I have any issues with WebMD as well, listen, well, listen. any future healthcare professional should because although it is a great resource, I have self-diagnosed myself a few times, not going to lie, but it's still, it doesn't replace the actual advice that you need from a doctor because what happens is you might have a set of symptoms that matches to like three different, completely different diagnoses like especially if you're maybe you went out of the country and you came back and you have all these like GI tract problems or whatever right maybe it's just food poisoning but maybe you have a tapeworm right they have the same symptoms so that's why I don't think WebMD is a good everyday resource but if you're just like oh I went to my doctor my doctor told me I have XYZ illness and I want to learn more about it then I think WebMD is a good resource because they have links to so many studies and so many, like they're very descriptive and they're written in lay people language because a doctor only has 15 minutes with you. But WebMD, you could, you could spend months. Well, they have, they have 15 minutes of 12, 9 a.m. appointments with everyone. Right, exactly. <laughs> this, this is also true. Right. Yeah, I think, I think, I think it's a balance that um, I definitely, you know, when you said the percentile question, I was like, I already know what you get. <laughs> Zach likes to talk in riddles, you know. And, no, like a wise talk, man. No, he likes to talk in statistics, you know, and he, cause he, he's a statistician. And, and so as soon as he said that, I was like, I know what he's getting at. Like, let me just cut you off right there, buddy. I just want to know where they were like, I mean, you know, they could be in the 20th percentile, they could be the 80th, they could be 70th. I, I definitely yeah. think it would be above like 60. Yeah, it's just, definitely. And not. just kind of a testament to doctors being uninformed generally or just a testament to the large amount of data that the was internet. compiled yeah. on, on yeah. the I don't because there's only so much one human can remember. Yeah. Right. Very true. So very if you have an algorithm set up that can scour all databases ever, then obviously that's gonna be more accurate. Cool. You okay? I said Google. Go, Google. Go. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But yeah, that's that's interesting that we that we happen to have, you know, a health care Professional. Oh, yeah. future. <laughs> no, no, no. We, we, we call it. We call it. You know, we believe in you. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's no problem. But yeah, that's that's interesting that, that we we look at the internet and we're like that could be our new, like like you were just bad mouthing the internet just a couple a couple really? years ago. Yeah, you were like Google be all up in my. This yeah, is exactly. But that, it is. Though. That, that, that it portion is. of that portion but, of. But it, I mean, yes. at the same time, that's what I'm saying. It's a double edged sword because I feel like. To be a help, they have to be intrusive. But to 
I mean, on the other side of that is kind of like, well, now you have access to my personal information. But so, so UN declared the internet as a basic human right, right? Of course they did. It. I, 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 honestly, it is, and I don't think it's inherently bad or good. It's who has this information and, and to what end are they using it? Okay. Like, I don't care if you have my personal information, what are you going to do with it, right? right. Like, but if a mafia boss has my personal information, I might be a little worried, right? right? right. So right. where is this information going is far more important than what, to me, than like who's collecting Who's it. collecting it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's definitely true, but it's also a, it's kind of like when, whenever there's a, you know, like a school shooting or something, and someone says, you know, uh, well, it's a, it's a right here in America for us to carry a gun. Like, don't try to take that away. You know, it's kind of like, well, it, you're right, but you're wrong. Mm -hmm. You know? You, and, I have a lot of feelings on gun violence, and that is a, <laughs> she would be an entirely different day. She said, entirely different day. That's what we're doing the next week. <laughs> what were we? You don't think we've kind of overdone it? <laughs> no, I definitely uh, watched yeah, all three of those. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like we kind of did it. I'm trying to tell you that. We did say that, a lot of but this. then I, I suggested to him, I said, hey, you know, we can't not cover gun violence and it just happened on the street at Santa Fe. True, but what are you going to say that's not already been said? This is also true. Zach just looking at me. He was like, yeah, I'm... He's like, I already said this to you. Don't believe me. But, but, but if, if that's the course of action that we're going to take, right, in, in, in what we're trying to do, because if the whole point of troll proof is to, I guess, bring thought where there was, you know, you're just being like stagnant. Like a sex pool of just right everyday stuff, everything that you deal with in your everyday life. You don't think outside the box. You don't think. And so, if we're gonna say that, well, it's already been said, then we shouldn't even have the podcast because everything at no. some point has been said. It's just like, hey, no. go go read Forty Eight Laws of Power. Um, if you want to know what we're gonna talk about, uh, go read Malcolm X. Um, go read the, the Prince. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but the thing is, like, the point of me saying you're not going to say anything that hasn't already been said is mm -hmm. there's enough thought out there about this it's right. more the action that we need yeah. mm -hmm. and the action although i love your podcast yes <laughs> <laughs> yes i'm listening will not stem just from a podcast it's mm -hmm. actually organizing things in the community right yeah. it's not oh let me speak at you mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. gun violence because everyone has their thoughts about it and they're not going to change like i've had my gun violence thoughts since I was probably 12, they're not going to change. Like, I, I am aware that... Probably even 12. Though, yeah, you know, that seems like the right age, but even like nine years later, there has been very little difference in what I thought originally about guns and what I think now, right? So if you just keep talking and discussing the same topic, while me... So like, we should just X the news out. I mean... No, God, no. No, no, no. Translate That's the thought that you're putting out there into action. Mm -hmm. Like, there are so many rallies, right, mm -hmm. out against gun uh, violence. There's, we know that the NRA is this big bad wolf with so much, so much, so much money that it controls what the CDC can experiment and research on, right? So these are topics that, if you're aware and you turn that into a political capital of, I'm going to vote for someone that doesn't take money from the NRA, and you get enough people to do that, mm -hmm. That's when you're gonna see gotcha. actual difference, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I agree, and at the same time, I feel like the whole point of the internet is that I don't have to get out of my, I don't have to leave my house. See, that's what that's upsetting to me because it's like I understand. That, that that that's exactly true. Like, think about this, right? We have everything we need to be able to have a, a rally. Yes. That, that's not outside. We, I can have a rally. Right here. Exactly. Like, I'm on my computer, you're on your computer, you're on your phone, like, and we just, we just all... The, the thing is, I mean, everyone is on the internet, but people use the internet for different reasons. things. Yeah, yeah, different reasons. Like, some people are just strictly leisure. You know, it's like... <laughs> she's like my mom. She's don't want to learn. Leisure. Don't yeah. want to learn anything. Yeah. You know, so, um, what is this? This seems like it's a little substantive. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Have to use a brain cell? <laughs> this, this, this is true. This is true. This is true. But yes, Asta, I, I, I definitely agree that action is the best, um, I guess, 
don't, I don't even know what the word that I want to use. Kind of like, I guess, remedy for, for, for a lot of the things that we discuss on the show, but it's like... That's hard. That's the hardest part. And that's of, the hard part. Yeah, like, you get to that, part. and you stop. Maybe that's something we should try to do. More of, right? Yeah, I definitely think we should move in that direction. I feel like it'd be hard. I mean, you, it's, it's, it's already hard. hard. Like, I feel like... Mm-hmm. Uh, and, I mean, I have my opinions. Sure. Like, I mean, kind of... <laughs> like, and, you know, not to... Not to knock anything that anyone, you know, does because it's, you know, if if it does do something, even even changing one life is yeah. is better than nothing. But sometimes I feel like you have to kind of weigh the effort versus the reward. You know, you have to law, law of diminishing returns. You have to, I mean, you have to kind of put all that into play. Like, opportunity like, costs. Yeah, yeah opportunity yeah. costs. It all has to come into play. Like, I mean, if you're, you know, like, I remember they had that, some rally on TV where it's like they look look really expensive because their people were like singing they had like all these celebrities and stuff there and they're coming out and all these people tents and food and music and all this kind of stuff it was on TV and it's like you know and gun violence and all this I'm like okay so let me get this straight let's look at the psychology of individuals regular I guess you know people who weren't really thinking about killing anyone in the first place are watching like oh yeah this is great let's end gun violence but the people who are intentionally planning to kill a bunch of people, I mean, are they really just watching this like, yeah, you know what? This is right, you know? Yeah. This is, who, who is this? Is, this is Taylor Swift. She told me that I shouldn't shoot people. You, this, this <laughs> you know, you know let, let me go in and just put my gun down. I don't think that's the the rally I don't think the point is, <laughs> is to change but, but, it. But he's, 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 he isn't wrong. No, yeah. I, don't, I, I agree with you. I don't think it's going to change their mind, but I don't think that's the target audience. I think the target audience is the complacent on the fence people that could care less either way. They're like, you're going to shoot up people, I don't care. So, you're not going to shoot, I don't care. So it's for them to be like, join our side. But, uh, like, then. I, I, but, I but I'm, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying then, when, okay, let's say for example, you get all the neutral people, right? <laughs> you get all the neutral people. It still doesn't stop the people that are shooting. <laughs> you get all the neutral people. You've got all the people who are already on that side. So now, I mean, you probably got like, like you might have like eighty-seven percent of the people or something. You, okay. And then you That's got nice like, number. and then you might have like eight percent of people are still like, hey, I'm going to keep our guns, but we're, you know, we're still normal. We just still want to yeah. keep our guns. And then you got two or three percent that. Just want to kill everyone. <laughs> like, and that, the fact is, you can't change them, but you can change their access to them. That's the whole debate, right? But can you? Yes, that's the whole point. But, that's why you get the neutral but, people. But how, so you, how... Okay, now, I know there's legislation, of course, which is, to me, legislation has stop never stopped me. anything. This is true. Until you go to Australia. But finish with that and then I'll... Okay. So I mean, we could, we could go around, we could have a totalitarian state thing. People go around, let's destroy every gun walk in the house and have, you know, the Terminator or someone, I don't know, some, some, <laughs> some, the, yeah, 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 it has to be the Terminator, because, I mean, if you're going to just walk in people's house and take it your guns from them, yeah, it has to be yeah. the Terminator, so the Terminator goes to everyone's house and give me your guns, you know, and then, you know, people are like, wait, no, you can't have my guns, I will come in and find all the guns <laughs> located here, and then, you know, they, they go in and I guess they use their device that can locate all the guns or something. In the wrist, because it's what it has to be in my imaginary. Right, in imaginary of course. Mm-hmm. 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 Like <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. You yes. know, I, I mean, I just it's not practical okay. to me. Like, it's not practical to. There's so many guns. There's so many gun companies. Guns have flooded America. There's oh. guns everywhere. There's illegal guns. Guns in the streets. Guns everywhere. There's. It's so saturated. Guns are a part of our culture. How that? I just don't see a way like for that to for that to happen. So there's, Norway had this legislation, and granted, Norway is a tiny country, right? So they had this legislation, legislation, I cannot speak today, that just made it harder for people to buy guns because they had to go through a background check, a more thorough one than we do here. Because here you can go and have that background check immediately and buy a gun, Mm -hmm. right? So, but theirs is over a three day period. You have to wait three days from when you apply for a gun, have a background check, and when you buy a gun. And that in itself reduced their gun violence by 55%. That, that, that small measure. I feel like, but nowhere also doesn't have like 
But that's the thing. The hood where it's just like I just come to your house and like you everywhere, the trunk, has, everywhere and has then, the yeah. But I mean, like, let's be real. They don't have the racial like. I guess, they don't. How do how do the guns get if if you're already poor, right? And how do you how do you get these guns? That's my question. You know what I mean? It's, and, and so we already have the system in place that supplies those guns yeah. that they can't afford anyway. So how, like, that is my question. Like, so, I mean, everyone has the hood, but I mean, do they have the same things that we have? The demographic here is completely different. I feel like that would help people that go and buy, like, a, like buy their guns from a store. Mm -hmm. But I, I know plenty of people that That's have, cool, yeah. You know what I mean? Their guns aren't registered. Like right. they they never bought it from the store. Everyone, I feel like most people that I know right now mm -hmm. that I know have guns. They're not the only person that I know has bought a gun from a store is Jace. And I would go on the limb and say that most of the guns purchased in America or, or that are available in America are not in gun stores. Why would you say that? Well, look at the accumulation of weaponry that we've had here. We've had wars. You know, we've had tons of wars. We've had guns that have went out of war commission. We've had, well, I mean, we've had guns that, I don't know if you've, there's, there's been documents I've watched, there's been guns that have been dropped, just kind of like trains have stopped in hoods. Stumped up. Yeah, they just guns yeah. have just been like stopped there. Yeah. Like, there's, I mean, there's so many guns and so, there's so many old guns and new guns get made. I mean, so many guns that they can't even, you know, sell in the stores because they're so old and Gun manufacturers have been around for years. Yeah. I mean, and these guns aren't going to just go away. These guns are yeah. somewhere. You know, mm -hmm. they they exist somewhere. And I, I mean, of course, like with anything that is going to be, you know, something that's a, not necessarily store value, but something that maintains its functionality for a long time. Mm -hmm. People aren't just going to destroy them. They're somewhere. They yeah, exist right, somewhere. Destroy. Like unless you take it apart and like lose a piece, you know, it's not like a. <laughs> yeah. piece, that's, yeah. It's not like a car, for example. Like you know, with a car, okay, a car from the '80s, eventually it's gonna die, and there's gonna be no point of like mm -hmm. continuing to ride it. Gun from the '80s can still kill people. Yeah. You know, gun from the '70s can still kill people. Yes. From the '50s, it can still kill people. So, you know, why destroy it? The mechanism is still work. This is. Anyway, okay. uh, thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, um, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. Again, we'd like to thank Asta for joining us today, as well as Zach. Um, thank you.